Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back for another EVE Online discussion video. I thought at first that I would do a little bit of exploration but looks like the server said no as I jumped through a gate and then all of a sudden my overview was empty, local was empty and uh, it smelled like trouble so I decided to quickly make my way back to the station. I actually managed to do that and uh, yeah unfortunately some server problems are keeping me from doing any gameplay stuff but TCP came out with a very early version of the monthly economic numbers for September. So let's take a look at those. Uh, as always, if you want to read the dev blog for yourself, you can go to eveonline.com. You click on the news link, which brings you to all of the news articles, including some uh, new stuff since uh, this uh, economic report came out, like Summon the Swarm is currently testing on CC. So if you are a capital pilot and you're interested in that PVE part, your new form of crabbing, definitely head over there to do a little bit of testing. Um, and yeah, at the moment, Totality Day is being um, celebrated. Uh, so a couple of events were organized, I think, by the players there as well. But uh, let's then go to the monthly economic report, which is this one for the month of September. And let's see if we can spot anything uh, that could be interesting. So first of all, we've got production versus destruction and the amount mined. Uh, let's take a look here. Produced actually slightly down over the month of September. So a little bit of hesitation, I would say. Uh, and mining that's definitely interesting after uh, peaking in the second half of September we are going down a little bit in the numbers and overall the entire month of September was a little bit down in destruction compared to August so I think the general story here uh, is pretty obvious is that there's not that much mining and production happening still I think we still have to go through uh, a lot of um, the old stocks especially of the large ships be, uh, and that have those prices actually go up or uh, another possibility is that uh, players are holding off until quarter four where CCP has announced that the end of scarcity uh, would uh, would uh, officially start which is of course quite a logical choice as well at the moment it's actually really hard to get a lot of stuff uh, and especially to make a lot of stuff and as a result uh, you know looking forward to a Q4 where perhaps things will become a little bit easier easier to get easier to make uh, better prices as well for industry uh, that could be what some players are waiting for and and the general vibe in Nalsic, I think, is that uh, all of the big groups now have their own spot in Nalsic. There might be some border skirmishes, but any major wars are not in the cards at the moment. So yeah, definitely a little bit of a lull after a comeback that started in August on these numbers. Um, total of valued destroyed by region. We can still take a look at that for September as well. Uh, the Citadel, uh, Veil of the Silent second, all right. The Fort, so Delph uh, falling back, I think, in the previous ones. Delph was uh, definitely high up there, but things, as we've seen, uh, have stabilized substantially. And then the Forge and the Citadel, I think, trade hubs, uh, player owned and uh, for uh, GTA 4.4. So those still have quite a little bit of activity. But actually the Forge, I think, was always like high up there in the fir in first place because of Vortex. And then, of course, the trade hub tends to attract a lot of uh, action from those Vortex. Unsuspecting uh, players can be caught there. But uh, yeah, Citadel actually first place, Veil of the Silent second place. I think that's where the Radders were having a very good summer. Um, and then the forge is at the moment in third place. All right, let's see if we can find something else that could be interesting. Here is a total mining value by region. So we've got uh, Genesis first, uh, which I think is for uh, Amar, and then very in impressive Delph, 1800 billion is estimated value of mining. Um, so it's obvious that the Imperium, uh, the Imperium machine uh, is back up and running, and that starts at the base level with quite a bit of active mining. The Kalevala expense and Veil of the Silence still, uh, still doing pretty well, but no longer like very first place or anything like that. Um, Fountain, uh, also Nelsic, I believe. The Forge, uh, that's uh, that's Heisek uh, Kaldari. Uh, Metropolis, Domain. Oh, Domain is actually a Mars space, I think. What is Genesis? Actually, I have to take a quick look at that uh, on Dotlan. Let's see if I can find it. If Dotlan. Uh, and then if that's also Nelsic, man, they are then uh, mining up a storm. Uh, Genesis. 
And then Regent, please. Can I find that? Oh, lots of uh, alliance and things like that. Yeah, there we go. Genesis region. So a quick search for that. It has some high sec as well. Uh, anything that I know? Dar Pakshi. Um, so I believe that that's, that's Concord, actually. What else do we have? Quite a bit of low sec. Uh, and then here's some 0.5. Yeah, it's, it's a Mar. So it's still a Mar. Uh, that's uh, on first um, in first place here, but definitely not only a high sick region, uh, but then to have a domain here, actually behind Metropolis Minmetar, behind the forge as well for Kaldari. That's a little bit of a surprise, but yeah, Nosik is clearly mining quite a bit at the moment as well. Total NPC bounties by region. And well, if you were, uh, you know, uh, in the camp that said Veil of the Silent was doing 50% more uh, than the next Nelsic region, so they must be botting. Here is Delve coming back in full, full force, number one uh, for the uh, NPCs bounties by region, uh, passing uh, only just, but definitely by like uh, probably 10% or so. Uh, Veil of the Silent showing that, yeah, it's all about big numbers as well when it comes to ratting and uh, delve now back on mining back on uh, on uh, npc bounty so back on ratting and uh, it looks like uh, yeah, their pve uh, activities are back in full force after the war and some of the rebuilding efforts uh, in august i would say so very impressive of course Total production value by region. This is still dominated by the forge. So in Jita, close to the trade hub, there is apparently still a lot of production to make, uh, to be had. But Delph again uh, showing up in second place. Veil of the Silent uh, is here as well. So there's definitely two Nelsic regions where there is a lot of PVE activity, a lot of industry activity, and the forges are burning uh, at full force and that I think is one of the reason why some items are doing a little bit better if you follow Eve talk you know that some advanced PI materials for instance really made a comeback and are able to sustain pretty high prices on their one year charts and uh, this is probably the reason if you are building up your uh, carrier fleets your dreadnought fleets maybe titans and things like that as well for the long term uh, for your Nosic empire then you need a lot of that stuff in extra that that demand just exists and then uh, you know that means higher prices for these advanced pi materials for instance not necessarily across the board and i think there is still definitely still the economic aspect as well where for large ships like freighters it's probably still uh, not economical to actually produce them but some of these Nelsi groups are basically not really in uh, that uh, capital production for making a profit, but just for expanding their power base while everyone else is taking it easy, uh, potentially uh, before the, uh, the end of scarcity. They are still going all out because they can, they have the numbers, the organization, and that just gives them uh, more of a head start compared to everyone else. Uh, it's gonna, always going to be very difficult to uh, rectify the N plus one problem in EVE Online the more people you have on your side the stronger you will be in all aspects of the game uh, let's see total market value by region uh, maybe we can take a quick look at it without Jita Jita of course still number one but domain Amar uh, is uh, number two Delph going up there as uh, number three so Sinclair Zoo I think is the Galente trade hub Lone Trek Metropolis I think is all about the uh, Minmetar trade hubs but yeah Delph definitely pretty impressive to be competing with Sinclair Zone for instance and actually is a little bit higher in market value another sign that the Imperium uh, is definitely a quite sizable uh, group and market not yet uh, competing with a mar when it comes to size but yeah that's very very impressive in my book uh, contract uh, value i don't think we have to go through this but let's take a look at isk in and out i think that's down here yeah there it is uh, september 2021 isk uh, sinks and uh, faucets so this one is definitely pretty interesting not what i expected honestly 
um, because I still had the feeling that we were uh, increasing in activity after the summer slump. But look at that, uh, 1,406 uh, trillion at the beginning of the month and 1,405 trillion at the end of the month. But uh, faucets is 97 trillion, sinks is 54 trillion. So there's definitely a lot of this that has been created. But what has taken uh, the... Uh, the um, uh, wind out of the sails you could say of is creation is active is delta minus 44 uh, trillion that's quite a lot meaning that overall the way this economic report counts active is in the game that has gone down despite the fact that some 43 trillion uh, has been uh, created in the game as well uh, and i think uh, i saw an explanation in the reddit thread when this uh, economic report report for first came out that uh, that I think is going to be correct on this one is that uh, you need a certain amount of time before an account or a player uh, and thus his wallet is counted as inactive ISK and well the war uh, ended of course in August and it's entirely possible that uh, some players especially the PvP players that just want to fly fleets uh, want to be there for the very big actions that they have decided to take break after the war that a lot of alt accounts have gone inactive and this is what we're seeing here uh, so a part of the player base is probably still taking a break now that there is no major war happening in EVE Online but I still feel that some of these numbers especially if we're seeing what's happening in Delve in uh, Veil of the Silent, that part of the player base that are still there to prep, that enjoy industry, that enjoy empire building, they're actually uh, working overtime trying to make their group the biggest uh, and the best despite the very difficult situation that they have getting resources, getting stuff built at economic prices, all of that is going out the window. Uh, but of course, more titans is still more titans. It means more power in the game. And uh, the most dedicated groups are definitely in that arms race at the moment. Um, commodity uh, faucets over time I think we see another uh, overseer effects spike of course you may have uh, noticed that uh, overseer effects were part of the reward structure for the special event around the rogue drones and uh, it's gonna be another sizable spike that will actually uh, continue probably for a couple of days in October as well uh, which is again a lot of isk being created into the game uh, blue loot going down a little bit, uh, another sign that perhaps activity is declining somewhat. Truglavian data down a slight bit as well, although this is the full month of September, basically at the tail end we are going down. Bounty encryption bonds starting to show up on the chart, so I think that's tied to the uh, new Nelsic mechanic where you can rob the banks. Then you get some miscellaneous Empire Insignias that honestly don't have a big impact uh, considering the others or relative to uh, all of these others. Uh, but yeah, this this is a pretty sharp decline that we're seeing here uh, in the blue loot. Uh, obviously, the overseer effects spiking yet again, and even Triglavian data going down, uh, which leads me to another uh, comment or set of comments that uh, led to a, an interesting theory, I think, uh, around what CCP is actually doing here, which could be correct. I honestly don't know, but it sounds like that could be correct. Is that uh, CCP likes these events uh, as as a way for them to control the ISK flow in the game and. So if they say, all right, we want more ISK in the game, all right, launch an event, uh, put in Overseer effects, all of these will then be traded to NPCs uh, and create ISK into the game. But this allows us basically to decide on how much ISK is going to be generated through this event based on previous numbers. Um, and then they can uh, also set a stop to that so that they, they basically have a lot more control on the uh, ISK flows into the game and that this may be where the opportunities will lie to create a lot of ISK in the game where everything else is basically potentially stuck on the current low baseline um, at, uh, at the end of the scarcity uh, for resources which include ISK I think uh, in EVE Online. Top 10 uh, sinks and faucets over time. So above here is the creation of ISK. Down here uh, is the destruction of ISK. You can see that transaction tax um, has uh, lost quite a lot since CP has lowered the uh, the taxes on the uh, trading uh, in, in NPC stations very, very substantially. So at the moment, there's not a lot of ISK being destroyed into the game. Long term, we gotta be careful with this because of course we're creating way more than that. And 
that could create inflation that could get uh, out of control yet again. Corporate reward payouts for Truglavian invasions are up substantially. Corporate reward payouts for Sasha incursions actually down a little bit here at the tail end. Over the month of September, kind of peaked and uh, lowered in activity. Commodities market, that's, that should be blue loot, that's up, that's kind of weird compared to the previous one. Um, and then the bounty prizes, oh, so commodity markets, actually no, that's going to be more than just blue loot. It's going to be blue loot and also the spike of the overseer effect. Uh, so that's a lot of creation and then bounty prizes creating a lot of risk as well. But you can clearly see that uh, since like, let's say the start of the, of the year here, we had a period where the creation was a little bit over a trillion for like six to eight months right here, while the ISK uh, faucets were very high above half uh, a, a trillion ISK. And so here, not a lot of ISK was being created in the game. Uh, but then when CCP decided to remove or to lower those taxes quite massively, now all of this is creating ISK, right? This is, is creation of almost 1.5 trillion ISK, uh, but the destruction is way less than 0.5 trillion. Um, so here we do have a lot of ISK created into the game. But again, uh, we saw that uh, quite a few accounts went inactive the way ccp counts it which i honestly don't think we know exactly what kind of timings they put on all of that to get to these metrics uh, but uh, at the moment yeah a lot of is creation potentially inflation of course as long as uh, the isk stays in the game or stays active in the game and that should be reflected here in the money supply which uh, although in september doesn't exactly shoot up uh, like stratospherically or anything like that, you do see at the tail end here that we are going up and that we're staying above 1400 trillion ISK in the game. Most of it in characters, corporations pretty flat. Uh, so it's really active characters that are determining the, uh, the way this chart is going to move. But we're basically at an all time high for how much ISK is in the game. And this despite apparently the breaks that some of the fleet guys have taken in Nullsec. Velocity of ISK how um, uh, how often uh, does is exchange exchange hands uh, over the course of a month that is still pretty low although we had a recovery so you can see the massive recovery here when CCP changed the taxes again brought us abo uh, above 0.4 uh, but uh, you know we're staying just above that I would say uh, this is another thing it's pure speculation but that if CCP wants to get more ISK out of the system uh, taxing trade is probably not what they want to do as you do just basically lock uh, everything into place quite a lot and that uh, the lower taxes have incentivized active trading uh, stuff and disk that starts to um, to trade hands and so there are potentially of course other avenue for isk faucets that ccp can introduce into the game they may have to uh, think outside of the box a little bit for that uh, but the impact on velocity and on trade of the higher taxes is very visible here as well and then we've got uh, the uh, in indices uh, here that are also very very interesting because finally someone is back on the board here is the <laughs> mineral price index that's back down below 180 so minerals have become quite a lot more affordable and a big player in all of this is actually morphite as well that has gone down in price after ccp uh, introduced more sources sources for uh, morphite in general i would say that uh, the heisig minerals at the moment and over the month of september have been struggling although stayed relatively flat we can see a lot of pressure uh, on the price uh, that's starting to mount there as well with uh, tritanium not reaching the 4.5 is getting more uh, i think pyrite going down to the 17 range and mexalon is also still under pressure on the other hand isogen i think is starting to chew through those final reserves we are seeing higher prices steadier plateaus they're still coming out of the woodworks all those holders of isogen so we still see 30 million units in in one cell or coming to the market but uh, the vibe for me is that uh, they're slowly upping their price and able to up their price as active supply versus active demand of isogen uh, is still not in balance for the current price range so overall uh, there is pressure in the mineral price index this may look really bad or really good if you're uh, a manufacturer 
uh, that actually wants to buy the cheap minerals uh, but a very big impact here is what's what, what's happening and what has happened on the upside as well for more fight that went to like a 10k normal price to 100k normal price uh, so that's obviously uh, you know the most expensive single unit mineral it then 10 x's that's kind of crazy uh, but it doesn't impact tech one uh, industry it's it's all about the tech two industry but this this comeback here is interesting a pretty sharp drop off still nowhere near the normal average range you could say for the mineral price index and uh, but uh, for me another sign that ccp will probably not intervene in tech one minerals i don't expect him to make that even more plentiful or anything like that uh, i don't expect him to like rebalance the mining ships uh, so that they have even bigger yields or anything like that but yeah in more fights and potentially in other um uh, other uh, aspects of, of the industry change of the raw resources I think that's where the focus will lie uh, in, in the fourth quarter with hopefully potentially a dynamic system that actually changes uh, you know uh, allows for depletion of, of, of uh, resources and then it moving around the galaxy you have to chase it around a little bit that would of course be the dream but we'll see what CCP has planned uh, primary production price index going up a little bit for tech one I think uh, you know we also also saw that faction ships will probably be counted in there are very expensive uh, secondary actually going up a bit I'm surprised by that I thought we'd be more flat because take two ships in general uh, in my view uh, when I've taken a look at them and especially the battle battleships felt like they were they were stuck in a price range not really able to go up but in general this of course has way more in it than just ships there's also uh, probably tech two rigs and tech two modules and all of that in there so secondary and primary uh, here going up a little bit in price things becoming more expensive and despite that the CPI consumer price index still stuck uh, we know at this point why that is it's because it's uh, massively massively dominated by plex skins and and all of that sort of stuff um, so honestly I think for what's being created and done in the game uh, MPI PPPI and SPPI are uh, the most important numbers for you to take a look at and yeah minerals are going down in price if that can have enough of an impact on the capital ships and things like that as well uh, with more availability in q4 for some of the new stuff that's been introduced by ccp then perhaps uh, you know we could uh, see a resurgence in production of those goods as well as they become economically viable on lower production costs but all of that of course is pure speculation and as always beneath all of this you've got uh, quite a few extra charts on on exactly what's in all of these indices um, but uh, you know if if you want to take a look at all of these in detail you can definitely do so on your own time the link will be in the video description description as always so yeah, in general i would say for september a bit of a stall we're definitely not going stratospheric in everything just yet uh, i think this could be seen as a stall in uh, extra activity in eve online as well um, it's still very empty in the mars space when i'm doing my exploration in galente space i'm seeing a decent amount of uh, activity lots of competition uh, for all of the sites that i've encountered there but in general it does feel like we're stalling a little bit and again i think that that can be normal since ccp themselves have said it's going to be q four of this year before we end scarcity and that may be enough of a reason for players to say well then we're not going to put a lot of effort in eve online right now let us know in q4 what the juicy bits are and that's when we'll bite and come back could explain uh, why the numbers are hesitating to go even higher at the moment at least that's my read on the monthly economic report for september as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all next time